Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of September. How are you all doing? I hope you are safe and well and doing fine wherever you are. The world has been in quite a bit of upheaval, hasn't it? I mean, this has been full on. We are only in the middle of August and there is so much to talk about and there is so much happening in the news and I did a bit of a Google search this morning. I sort of caught up on some news myself. I myself have not been tuning into the news as much. Uh, I have had some chaotic things to deal with myself. It has been pretty full on and we are going to take a look. So those of you who would like to stick around for the energies for this month, stick around. We're going to take a look at what's happening. We're going to have a look at August. I'm recording this on the 15th of August. We're going to have a look in a little bit more depth as to what's happening now. Uh, and I will talk about what is coming up in the coming months as well. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining. I haven't been posting as much lately. I've just been super busy. I have also been posting a lot more content over on Patreon. You're welcome to come along and join me there. Uh, some of you sometimes, you know, I can see on my stats, you'll join for, you can join for just, you know, one month and then you can, you can cancel the subscription however you like. You can, you can subscribe on and off as you like there on Patreon. I'm very much posting there. I am due to post another video here. I want to do one of those videos where I draw on the screen. I love doing those so much. And the next one is how do you defend yourself? It is being formulated in my mind. I'm working on that all the time. So stick around. That will be coming. Uh, but yeah, so welcome all the new subscribers. Who knows, maybe I'll see you over on Patreon, uh, but I'll always be here. I'll always be posting here as well. It's just this month. We're going to take a look. We're going to have a look at the astrology. We're going to see why has it been so crazy. I myself didn't even look for myself at what was going on. I thought, no, I'll, I'll do it when I'm doing it for all of you. So let's take a look. Energies for this month. What is going on? Why is it so crazy? Well, I'll tell you something. September could be quite hectic as well. Okay, September could be quite full on as well. I'm not particularly seeing anything ease off. It kind of feels like things are ramping up a little bit. Uh, so we've got Uranus is going to go retrograde on the 2nd of September. So look at me, I'm reaching for the outer planets. You know, I only do that when things are bad, right? Remember in 2020 and I was reading the situation there and and how you know the whole world stopped and even I left here to go home to Sydney Australia for three years uh, at the start of 2020 and that was when I reached for the outer planets you know that was really the last time I think in a monthly where I I spent quite a bit of time talking about Pluto uh, right now we're going to talk about all three of them we're going to talk about Pluto Neptune and Uranus because they're all going to be retrograde so I've got here across September, all outer planets, including Saturn, will be retrograde. Okay, now this is powerful stuff. We've got all the outer planets, Pluto, Neptune, Uranus are going to be retrograde. Saturn will be retrograde. I've got here a lot of upheaval and generational change is happening right now. So we are in the thick of it. It is on. Uh, and I believe the first planet that is going to break the retrograde spell of the big outer planets, that is Pluto. And Pluto uh, is going to do that on the 12th of October, 2024. So according to my system, Sidereal Vedic Astrology, Parashara's Light 9.0, uh, it's indicating 12th of October, Pluto is going to be the first one to go forward again of these large outer planets. When we're looking at so much upheaval on the planet, we really do need to look at the outer planets. The outer planets are the ones that indicate generational 
change. So we can see that by the length of time one of these outer planets spends in one sign. So Pluto spends approximately 20 years in one sign. We've currently got Pluto in Capricorn. Pluto is taking you know, top leaders uh, to task basically and uh, you know Pluto Lord of the Underworld is going through and, and checking out you know um, leadership or Capricorn kind of things establishment leadership uh, the top people hierarchies all of that is being investigated by Pluto so Pluto spending 20 years in one sign Neptune spends about 13 or 14 years in one sign Uranus spends seven or eight years in one sign. So that's how when you look back in history, you see, you know, the 50s was quite different to the 60s. 60s is quite different to the 70s. And like this, we've got our decades. We've got our different um, cultural decades, you know, and the feel of those decades was all quite different. Uh, and a lot of that would tie into, say, for example, the movement of Neptune, the movement of Uranus for different things and of course the movement of Pluto it spends two decades in a sign there is a book that I've talked about on the channel before it's called the fourth turning you can take a look at that that is uh, the fourth turning an American prophecy by William Strauss and Neil Howe I'll also put on the screen a visual of a video I watched which summarized it really well. So you can check all of that out if you'd like to take a look. I would love to read that and see how that matches up with Pluto uh, here in the sidereal Vedic system. I just haven't got the time. I'm too busy doing too many things, guys, but that is, that's on my to-do list. There we go, I just made it longer. Um, now what has been happening sort of you know, in our local neighborhood here on Earth, you know, our more local neighborhood. Well, I'm definitely having a look at Mars being lauded by Venus. Okay. And I think for this month, I probably would have been very mild in my prediction. I probably would have tried to predict the most positive version of Mars being lauded by Venus. Okay. And I've got here when Mars is lauded by Venus, it can be interpreted as in action at its best. You know, this is, and you can see it, especially in sometimes in, um, and we'll t take, for example, like a man's chart. This is a man who maybe has Mars lauded by Venus and perhaps, you know, at times he, he doesn't do much or, and depending on where Mars is lauded by Venus in the chart, that will show where, you know, the gentleman in question is not doing much kind of thing. So if Mars is lauded by Venus in the fourth house, maybe he doesn't do much at home, around the house, you know, something like that. Um, that's a possibility. So we can see in birth charts, you know, when Mars is lauded by either Venus or the moon. Mars does not like being lauded or ruled by a, a feminine planet. Okay, Mars doesn't like this. And as I say, at best, we can interpret that as inaction. But at worst, at its shadow, side um, I've got here you know it, it, the, the shadow side of this can be well massive frustration for sure but frustration that leads to huge anger that leads to rage and destruction you know and, and again in an individual's chart you know if you have moon say for example in the fourth uh, Mars say for example in the fourth house or Mars say for example in the second house you know that can indicate things like at its worst um, domestic violence but you know I when I've met and I know so many men with the Mars lauded by the moon or Venus or, or something like this and what I find that is that they are a gentleman they're lovely men who are kind you know and who are very sophisticated I find it to be a very wonderful placement in a birth chart but you see that's me I always look for the best in any circumstance, in people, I always look for the best. So that is one of the ways that I interpret things, guys. So please bear that in mind as you listen to me. I will always try for the best prediction, okay? But we can see how this Mars being lauded by Venus has been playing out in our world uh, just recently. And I'm going to bring up a couple of examples. Um, 
where where is Mars going and, and how how is this Mars energy going to play out in the rest of the year? Well, I've got here that Mars is going to be lauded by Mercury in Gemini. So Mars is currently in Taurus, lauded by Venus. It's next going to go into Gemini, so it'll be lauded by Mercury, right? Then we're going to have Moon in Cancer. Okay, so that's a debilitated, sorry, Mars in Cancer. I've written here Moon in Cancer, haven't I? I'll just update my notes. We're going to have Mars in Cancer, right? After he's been in Gemini, he's going to go into Cancer, where he's debilitated. Okay. Uh, and then finally, I've got here, he gets to be ruled by his good friend, the Sun. So that's Mars in Leo. But Mars is going to step into Leo, guys, 6 June 2025. That's far away. And when I clicked through, because I'm looking at, okay, what's, what's Mars doing for the rest of this year? I need to know. I'm clicking through and I'm seeing, you know, when does he get to the good bit, which is Mars in Leo. And that's 6 June 2025. I was shocked by that. It's because Mars is going to do a retrograde in Cancer. Okay, and that's across December to Feb. So that is wow that that's going to be some full-on energy there and that is a bit concerning for the american election uh i haven't looked too much into that yeah i mean we're having a retrograde across the election period mars is going to be retrograde across that period what does that mean I will I would like to look at that maybe um, in the in the coming episodes we'll see how we go uh, so yeah I mean I don't know I'm I'm concerned about it though I am concerned guys I kind of feel like Mars is yeah isn't in great shape really until 6 June 2025 it's like Mars has reason to be frustrated for a long time you know, I think Mars and Gemini could be better and that's really happening across September and I'm going to read that for every single sign. I think it could be a bit better. But then Mars in Cancer could be quite a frustrated energy. It's debilitated. It's not in its best shape. And we do have to factor in our free will as well. I was reading Yogananda last night and he had said something about our collective anger can cause upheaval in the world. Our collective anger, he states, can cause natural disasters even. You know, I mean, yeah, I often say there's no accounting for free will. And this is one of the reasons that coaching is a big part of what I do and it's so important. And, and it's why on the book club, I, on Patreon I run a book club where we look at, at spiritual texts because you know, to me, Vedic astrology is a tool that helps us get closer to God. You know, it's, it's not an extravagant tool that we use to blame outer circumstances. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's one of the other beliefs that I have. Let's do a quick news matchup. We'll just see how this energy has been playing out. Mars in Taurus, which we are still dealing with right now. We will be dealing with this until, let's see, I think 26 August. Yep, Mars in Taurus until 26 August. So we are dealing with this energy right now. Um, I wanted to do a news matchup on, on a couple of news items. So the first one I just wanted to touch on very quickly was England, uh, English news. Uh, yes, here in England, 30th July riots. Um, and I've got here that when I looked this up, and I'll just bring up the chart now, I took a screenshot of it. Uh, yeah, look at that. We've got Mars in Taurus, okay, Jupiter and Moon are there as well. Wow, they're tightly conjunct. I should look up which nakshatra they are sitting in. But the thing that struck me was, oh my goodness, look at Mars's Lord Venus. It's sitting right in Gandanta. Okay, so that is, and oh, I haven't clicked up, but I'll show you. It's, it's, it's right on a Gandanta point. So the Lord of Mars Venus is seated on a Gandanta point, Ashlesha Gandanta point. So that is where uh, the eruption energy is coming from. So we can see that. Okay, so that one we can see. What else has been going on in the world? Well, I had a look at the recent earthquakes. 
today yeah I just looked up these earthquakes we've had quite a couple of earthquakes going on 7.1 magnitude quake 8th August that's in Japan uh, and I saw some news articles about a mega quake warning that Japan is giving to its people so definitely stay safe I know we do have viewers in Japan I've had a couple of bookings from Japan so stay safe if you're out there um, and know about this they would know everyone would know um, but I looked up sort of and there's so 8th of August mega quake oh no uh, not mega quake 7.1 magnitude quake um, there was a 4.4 quake 12th August California a 5.3 earthquake 15th August Papua New Guinea and one of the things I'm seeing here is Jupiter and Uranus in fixed earth Taurus has been a part of this I might have mentioned this in the Jupiter in um, Taurus video I might have mentioned there I can't remember I should see if I can link it if I can link it I'll try and link it um, I might have talked about it but definitely we can see an astrological signature that could cause earthquakes definitely Uranus in fixed earth Taurus until now when is that until that's right through to mid 2031 so it's a while okay so that's a Uranus type thing I have seen that yeah Uranus can be like Uranus in an earth sign we are I mean before 2031 we're going to have other planetary movements and things that could compound uh, that Uranus in earth there but it, it it could be a feature of of life over the coming years earthquakes I've got another news item here stock market dropped on the 5th of August some people are calling it a crash even uh, Mercury did go retrograde that day Mercury in Leo so I've got here a correction in the stock market is is certainly possible but I mean I'm calling it a correction because it's Mercury in Leo you know I don't particularly I mean we have Mercury go retrograde what is it four or five times in a year so yeah I mean it's not always doing that right but Mercury in Leo fair enough uh, that because the the line of investments 511 yes that's that's fair enough so we we, we could attribute uh, the stock market dropping on the 5th of August to, to Mercury there I've got here uh, intensifying war situations around the world which are ongoing got here Mars will aspect Ketu in Virgo which could aggravate warlike situations through to 20th October the other thing that we can factor in at this time as well is that as per Vedic numerology we are in an eight year it's a Saturn year we are being tested uh, you know the shadow side of Saturn is is very difficult so we're all being tested next year we've got a number nine year it's a Mars year and there could be a lot of endings happening next year now 2026 is a number one year so a lot of new beginnings in 2026 there is positivity on the horizon there are good times coming for sure and one thing I've been observing as I study individuals lives and you know as, as I study certain people I see that um, when a person has a destiny you know they're protected God protects uh, people when when there's a destiny and it's you know it's when we reduce our own personal desires and we try to learn and know okay what does God want for me you know and we we go further on the spiritual path we develop that closeness with God or the all is one when we do that type of thing uh, there there is more protection there you know so so yeah how are we doing on time 19 minutes I haven't even touched on the next little bit of news matchup is a request by one of you I'm going to put it on the screen thank you so much for your comment 
You're one of my, you know, long-term uh, viewers. You often put wonderful comments. I want to thank everyone who comments. You're all wonderful, you know. Thank you. Uh, I wish I could write to all of you. I just don't have time, unfortunately. But this comment, someone's asked me to look at the chart of Robert F. Kennedy, and I would like to do that. So what I'll do is I'll bring up the chart. I haven't got any, I've got, I've got some scribbles on here, which I'll happily talk about. But yeah, I, I, I would like to chat about his chart because I find him interesting. And I really enjoyed watching him actually uh, speak. This was in the years 2020, 2021. 2022 that's when I used to watch him quite a bit and I'll bring up his chart right now on the screen I'll show you the years when I was watching him so that's we can see is Ketu Mahadasha right here 2015 to 2022 and I was watching him 2020 2021 2022 thereabouts uh, and what was I watching I was watching him well firstly not on any mainstream channel all right, see, so have a look at where his Ketu is seated. It's seated in Cancer in the eighth house. So this is a hidden, undercover sort of a man, right? And I used to watch him on Rumble or BitChute or all these underground little channels and you have to click and you have to go through hoops and eventually get there and, you know, um, prove that you're not a robot and all that. And yeah, I used to watch him on all these underground sort of channels. And what was he talking about? Well, he was talking about his investigations into the pharmaceutical industry, and he was talking uh, about environmental things, but mainly about the pharmaceutical thing. And that's what interested me, because at that time I was researching into that stuff too. And, you know, because of advice by people like him, I decided, you know what, wow, I don't want to participate in, in some of the pharmaceutical goings on of the time um, which I didn't do so you know that's Ketu Mahadasha right there we can see the work he was doing he wrote a book called The Real Anthony Fauci okay which has I just went, hopped on Amazon before uh, starting the record button and I've done a little bit of research here so I, I looked at him on Amazon he has written books okay now we can see he's a writer for sure. I would definitely be predicting that. If I didn't know this was Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s chart, I would definitely be saying this man is a writer. It's in his D10 chart as well. If you want to have a look there, um, we've got that writer archetype of Moon, Mercury having a strong relationship there, Moon lauded by Mercury in D1. On Amazon, he has got 22,000 five-star ratings on his book. Isn't that just incredible? Uh, and when you click on his CV on Amazon, it has the most incredible list of things that he's done. Defender of the Environment, Senior Attorney, Chief Prosecuting Attorney, Professor um, at the Pace University School of Law. He's a graduate of Harvard uh, and London School of Economics. And what I would be saying, now would I predict that he could be involved in the law? Well, absolutely. Sixth House is lit here with this um, incredible retrograde Jupiter here. So he's definitely, yeah, I mean, you could see, uh, say and see law. What I would be saying, so archetypally, I would read him as a judge archetype. He's got exalted Saturn. Okay, so this is, that's powerful. So I, I wouldn't necessarily be saying lawyer, I'd definitely be saying judge, 100%. He'd make a fantastic judge if um, that is something I don't know if that's that kind of pathway is, is open to him um, one of the reasons I was so excited to see your comment thank you viewer and for putting the time because when I used to watch him in 2020 and 2021 and thereabouts I used to wonder what happened to his voice and that really concerned me and I, I was trying to look at his chart to figure it out now that I've got the time, oh, and I put, plugged it in today, and I was like, there it is, because his Rahu, um, now Rahu matures at age 42. The camera's going to cut out. I'll just let it do its thing. Rahu matures at age 42. And in an interview, he said that that's when his voice changed at age 42. And when I plugged 
him in the correct time and then Rahu goes into the second house I went oh my god that's look at that the voice you see because and I knew it's connected in with Rahu because I was hearing now I can't remember where I heard this but someone was talking about the fact that Rahu is like spasmodic things in the body like when you look at what Rahu's doing in the body it can be causing a spasmodic type um, effect and we've got his Rahu seated in the second house of voice and look at that as soon as his Rahu matures age 42 that was the event he's had to deal with he's had to deal with this change in his voice in an interview he said that he can speak at a very high pitch and it's smooth um, and we can see his Venus look at that it's a zero degrees it's a miracle degree Venus which is very tightly conjunct this Rahu here it's quite extraordinary so it looks like in the high registers he's able to speak clearly but then when he you know wants to speak when he wants to use his masculine voice it's like he can't and good on him for keeping that masculine tone in his voice you know of course like yeah I, I mean that's um he's he's done everything under the sun he's said that he's done all the and that's yeah i mean his boy has he investigated the pharmaceutical industry you can see that with the ketu in cancer here cancer you know liquids m nourishment eighth house like he's gone deep into the shadow side of um pharmaceuticals and all that it's incredible uh, what he's done but he would have also I'm sure he would have tried a lot of occult things as well he probably just can't speak about it um, but he would have for sure because I've thought to myself oh I wonder if he would try chakra clearing or this or that he would have done we can see that in the chart uh, this is a guy who would have tried everything so yeah breaks my heart that is um, that that what happened to his voice has happened um, what are other things that I can see from his chart? Oh, well, definitely he's a father, natural father, father archetype. He's got this beautiful uh, Sagittarius ascendant here. So he's a fatherly man. But, you know, we've got Fifth Lord in, um, in the 11th there. And when you take a look at his D7 chart, you can definitely see that this man would have children. You can also see that marriage-wise, he could definitely have more than one wife. I did briefly I saw that in the chart and then I thought let me just confirm on Wikipedia and yeah he's had more than one wife you can see that he's he's gonna have doubts about because he's also got moon uh, lauded by Mercury in the seventh house so he's gonna have a lot of doubts about partner and, and things like that um, now let's take a look at could he run the country yeah I mean he can I, I don't see why not but what I would say is that um, I've watched him in interviews. I haven't watched him in interviews lately, but a month or so ago, maybe a month or two ago, I did see him interviewed by a British journalist. And I was very impressed by how grounded he is, how real he is. You know, yes, he's running, but he's under no illusions. He knows that it's not going to be him kind of thing. Um, he's very grounded, but he's serving his country. He's doing the best he can. He mentioned in that interview that he spends something like half a million dollars on security and if we have a look at his um, second house and his uh, 11th house there these are beautifully set up I mean yeah he's got that kind of money he does uh, you know half a million dollars on security I think it's per month it's something outrageous anyway maybe I should google that before I post this and just double check but I'm sure I heard him say that security would cost a lot of money for someone like him uh, I think he was talking about this because maybe they did offer him some security recently but he's a bit unsure whether I should take it from them like yeah I get that um, he's got to be careful where he where he gets his security from could he run the country all right we're having a look at Venus Mahadasha here is this going to deliver that kind of thing to him 2022 to 2042 I mean it's hard to say uh, I'm looking at D9, I'm looking at D10, I'm looking at a lot of things astrologically. What I will tell you is that, you know, in terms of, and even putting the chart aside, 
I've watched him in interviews. He's a very likable, good guy. You know, I, I really do think that. I, I think, you know, there's, there's an exalted Saturn. These are, these are good, honest people. They're the judge archetype, you know. Uh, they can see both sides of the argument. They know who's telling the truth. A lot of good qualities. But it's the Venus Mahadasha thing that, um, see, I, w I don't think I would vote for him because, and the reason is, this is a Venus in Capricorn. So he, he is an establishment guy, you know, and we do have Rahu here. I mean, this is someone who might innovate with what the establishment is and, and would be prepared to change it and would be, you know, for sure. Uh, but my concern would be, my only concern would be that is this a person who is going to keep like the war machine going? And if he is that guy, then I wouldn't vote for him. I would have to submit a no vote in America, which is what I did here in this country. We had an election here in the United Kingdom and I just put a big X on all of them. I folded up and I put it in. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I just can't support any of these people. But yeah, I mean, you know, like if, if he was running, for example, what would I want to see? What would I want to see for a win? Uh, I did have a look at his transit wheel as well, didn't I? Actually, what's his um, Antardasha like? See, there are a lot more things I should have looked up. But guys, I'm also looking at the time. Oh my gosh, no, we're six minutes in. I could get, I could go down all kinds of rabbit holes. I'm not going to. What I will say is that, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Well, let me just have a quick look. Oh, this Venus sun is going to start uh, July 2025. That is interesting because he does have sun in the 10th in D10 and D9. It's a debilitated sun in D10, which is not great, but it's, it's pretty solid there in D9. Yeah, I don't, I don't particularly see that he's going to win. I did look at 2028 though. And if there is to be an election in 2028, that is promising for him. I did have a look at that. I had a look at the transit wheel and, I had a, and I'm now looking at the Mahadasha thing. Look at that, that's Venus, Mars. That's strong. That is strong for, yeah, some kind of um, leadership role. But I do remember Donald Trump saying something about, we're gonna fix it so good that there aren't gonna be any more elections. Now, I, I don't know if he said that exactly, exactly, but that was how I received his message. Okay, that's what came across to me. So I'm not sure. I've got big question marks about the United States and what's going to be happening there. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to close up the chart because we've got to get into the mini reports, guys. There's just so much to cover. And... Um, Thank you to my viewer who uh, mentioned that. I hope everyone, I should have said this before I started talking about the political thing, but I really do hope everyone's going to be kind and polite in the comments because, you know, otherwise I, I won't talk about politics. It is, it is a bit off-putting. I don't like to upset people, you see. I don't want to. But at the same time, I do want to speak my mind a little bit sometimes, and it is enjoyable for me to look at charts and do things. So I like doing it, but at the same time, if the comments get really bad, then I'll stop talking about politics, guys. It isn't easy sometimes. So I do hope I've been able to do so without offending anyone. Uh, that's always my aim. All right, let's take a look at the mini reports, guys. Wow, we're nine minutes in. I'm going to have to scoot along. Okay, Aries. Aries, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Aries Ascendant, Aries Moon or Aries Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. How are you doing, Aries? I hope you're okay wherever you are. Now, Mars is going to be in third house Gemini all September. The transit starts from the 26th of August and it goes until the 19th of October. This is great energy for you to power ahead at work. You can complete projects that require a hands-on touch or your effort. If you are building a business or growing anything, there will be energy available to get things done. Okay, this is good energy for social media growth. 
if you are using online technologies any of that third house okay your your social media pl platforms can grow now venus is debilitated in sixth house virgo and then that's right through to the middle of the month and then 17 september onwards venus steps into libra so for the first half of that month there you've got good energy for your career but it's not the best energy for your relationships so if you're feeling that your relationship is not going so well right now uh, just don't put any pressure on it just leave it leave it be and uh, you focus on building you I've got here you will want to do your own thing a bit more if things in your relationship are a bit tense right now mid October onwards relationship energy is going to be a lot better Okay, there are better times coming up. Now, 3rd September, there's a new moon in Leo, Purva Falguni Nakshatra happening in your fifth house. So this is a time to plant seeds for an expansion in your family or for new creative gifts or ideas. Basically, creativity. So either, either you're wishing for an expansion in your family, like I want to have a baby, right? Or you're wishing for creative ideas uh, or creative skills or gifts to be enhanced, you know, that your creativity takes off or is recognized or is seen, that kind of thing. And the 18th of September, we've got a full moon in Pisces, Uttra Bhadra Pada Nakshatra, happening in your 12th house. So this is a pretty amazing full moon. Uh, you might be extra insightful at this time. And this is a really good time to note down any dreams or downloads. You might be getting some good creative ideas come through on this full moon. And it's that Rahu moon in the 12th. So this is genius type of energy. When we've got that Rahu moon signature, I do tend to think that's, that's something of genius. So, um, Pay attention to your ideas and dreams at that time, Aries. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Taurus Ascendant, Taurus Moon or Taurus Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Mars will be in second house Gemini all September. The transit starts from the 26th of August and it goes until 19th of October. So you'll definitely want to be careful with how you communicate at this time, especially how you communicate with family members or people that are really close to you. Yeah, I've got here, there could be arguments with friends and or family. It's a good time to sort of do your own thing uh, if, if you want to. Now, expenses could run a little higher this month, so take care of that, be mindful of that. I've got here, yeah, take care to to not overspend. Venus is debilitated in fifth house Virgo uh, and that's through to the middle of the month then 17 September onwards Venus steps into Libra. So in the early part of the month you might be dealing with an old flame. Uh, Venus passes transiting Ketu and this is happening in your fifth house so it could be something to do with your romantic life but it could be something that maybe you thought surely that's in the past or why am I dealing with that again or that has come up now you know it could be that kind of energy could be an old flame that that you remember or have to deal with or something yeah I've got here this isn't the best energy for your love life I've got here invest your energy into creative projects and things you love to do on your own what are those things? Make time for those things. Make sure that you, you know, Venus is a planet of reward and we need to reward ourselves. So sometimes if we're not being rewarded, uh, let's say you're self-employed and it's hard to get clients right now. Everyone's on summer holidays and you don't have much work and well, reward yourself with things that you love to do. Downtime. Maybe there are books you want to read. Maybe there's a project just a passion project that you want to do. Make sure you have time to do that. I've got here, Love Life Gets Better Early November. So it is a little bit of a long transit where Venus isn't in the best shape. 
Uh, I'm not saying love life is terrible until early November. I'm not saying that, but it's like love definitely improves a lot early November onwards. Okay. Um, until then, it might just be a, a little bit up and down or love life has its moments. 3rd September, new moon, Leo Purva Falguni. This is happening in your fourth house. So you can plant seeds for improvements to your home, improvements to where you live or how you live, or maybe you want to, I don't know, install a new hot water system. <laughs> I have recently done that. Um, yeah, I mean, you might want to wish for something. You might want to wish for the time and energy and funds to be able to do that. And that's home related. Something about where you live, how you live, comfort related. And 18 September, we've got a full moon, Pisces, Uttra Bhadrapada Nakshatra. This is happening in your 11th house. So you might gain some insights about close friends or older siblings at this time. Okay, so if you're reflecting on the people in your life, you might discover some things and learn some things about the people that are close to you. Uh, whether or not it's appropriate to share that information with them, I don't know, <laughs> but you will get some insights. All right, thank you so much, Taurus. We are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome, thank you so much for joining. So this is Gemini Ascendant, Gemini Moon, or Gemini Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Mars will be transiting first house Gemini all September. This transit starts from the 26th of August and it goes until the 19th of October. Now, depending on what natal planets you have, say, for example, in uh, in the first house there this could be energizing or this could be tiring for you so you're going to want to feel this one out see how it is for you if you do get a bit more tired than normal it might not be you it might be Mars transiting through this area okay uh, so just take it easy just rest um, I know sometimes yeah sometimes like um, people blame it on aging or things like that it might not be it might be a transit uh that is a thing yeah because sometimes you know yeah i i go through transits where i'm just exhausted and yeah that's that's what that is um it's the transit it's actually the transit <laughs> I'm the first one. I try to look to myself. I try to not blame things outside of me, but you know, sometimes it really is the planet. <laughs> it really is. Uh, let's have a look. I've got here, take care how you speak with family, especially with mother. Yes. Mars is aspecting into that fourth house there. So definitely take care in how you speak. You might be just a bit, you know, with that Mars energy, you just might be a bit more full on got here you might want to restart an exercise routine program at this time if you've dropped off so if let's say you're like me and you do your exercises diligently for a while but then you drop off and you don't do them this could be the time to restart that so that's um, across September might be a good time to to do up the exercise now Venus is debilitated in fourth house Virgo that is through to the middle of the month and then 17 September onwards Venus steps into Libra. So in the early part of the month it's good for you to be at home more. Uh, you might yeah just kind of find yourself at home more cooking up something delicious finding time to rest. Equally I mean we do have Ketu in, in there so it could be that you want to spend time at home, but then for some reason you can't as well. That's a possibility. But I don't expect that to be for long or anything. That might be a day or two here or there or something. Uh, in the last half of the month, you have great creative energy. You really do, Gemini. I've got here, if you can indulge in art, creativity, time with your children or time with your romantic partner. Now, 3rd September, we have a new moon in Leo, Purva Falguni, Nakshatra. This is happening in your third house. So you can plant seeds for more soul tribe people to come into your life. If you want to expand your social circle, if you want to meet more people, 
then wish for that here on the 3rd of September in the new moon. And then on the 18th of September, we have a full moon happening in Pisces, Uttarabhadrapada Nakshatra in your 10th house. So at this full moon, you might gain some insights about people or agendas in your workplace. Uh, yeah, this is people in your workplace or agendas in your workplace. Could be career insights. Maybe you're reflecting back on your career and you get some aha moments about why this happened or why that happened. Um, you could also be getting these insights about the world at large and what is happening on the world stage. You might get some ahas or some revelation or something occurs to you in that way. Gemini, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. How are you doing, Cancer? I hope you're good. This is Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Moon or Cancer Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Mars is going to be in 12th house Gemini all September for you. And this transit starts from the 26th of August and it goes till the 19th of October. So this might leave you feeling restless at times. Um, could impact sleep a little bit but there's a pretty easy solution for that all you have to do is exercise make yourself a bit tired you'll sleep just fine so i've got here it's a good time actually now what type of exercise we've got mars in the 12th so this is a good time for yoga for qigong for dance you know anything um i've got here physical activity that gets you into the zone but it's also this is union this is physical union physical union with the divine you know, what is that activity that you do where you just feel, yeah, like you're closer to the divine somehow? I've got here, you might be picking up inspiration for upcoming creative projects. That is a possibility. And if you feel tired, either mentally or physically, then this is a time to just rest and check in with yourself during the day. Check in. I did that today actually. I was checking in with myself and just making sure, okay, am I relaxed? And just sort of reminding myself that there's no reason for me to be tense. You know, I'm at my desk, all is well, I'm fine, you know, I'm doing the work that I enjoy. Like, yeah, and I just kind of remind myself because um, I've probably got some old unconscious, subconscious habits from work days of long ago that when I sit down to do work I'm stressed or something and I'm just like no just be calm just everything's good sometimes we have to consciously remind ourselves isn't that amazing uh, Venus Venus is debilitated in third house of Virgo okay so that is the first half of the month and then 17 September Venus steps into Libra so in the early part of the month you might be dealing with some old issues to do with your friends, maybe. Could even be that a friend gets eclipsed out or something like that. That is a possibility. Or maybe there's a friend that something turns or changes. It's a possibility, maybe. Because we do have Ketu in there. That's why I'm saying that. I've got here in the last half of the month, you have great energy to pour into your home space. Perhaps you are making things more beautiful. Perhaps you are executing some interior design ideas. And guys, this does not have to be expensive. Um, just the other day, I went to my local, sort of a vintage secondhand shop. And I saw a frame, a picture frame on the wall. And I didn't like the painting inside it, but I started thinking, oh, I wonder if I get that. And I was thinking about what to put in it and I think the frame I think it costs 10 pounds if I was to buy that that's all right you know I'm, I'm not going to buy it because I don't need it and not right now and I'm saving and being conservative and but you know yeah where was I I think I was talking about that 10 pound frame that I saw in the second hand shop and I thought wow that's so beautiful and yeah it you know these things don't need to um, making a change in your place it doesn't need to cost too much money but it can just I don't know it can just bring new energy it's like when I got that you can see that painting there that is 
I printed that at Snappy Snaps. I think it cost, I can't remember, maybe two or three pounds. It didn't cost a lot of money. So, and I got the image, I got Adobe Illustrator to do like a, I told it what to do and it did it. it I wanted Sydney skyline. <laughs> but I wanted Sydney skyline in Kendone style. That's what I typed in. And that's one of the ones that it spat out. So yeah, I know it's really naughty. I went down the artificial intelligence road. That's the only time I've done it. That's it, I, I won't do it again. All right, uh, let's have a look. So yep, interior design, 3rd September, new moon. This is happening for you in Leo, Purva Falguni Nakshatra in the second house. You can plant seeds for more money, for more material security, okay? So this is, you can wish for bigger savings, wish for a savings, you know, um, or to have that credit card pay out, paid off or whatever it is. Uh, so that's 3rd September, new moon, Leo, Purva Falguni, second house. Yeah, you can wish for money, basically, material security. Uh, and 18 September, we've got full moon happening in Pisces, Uttra Bhadra Padra Nakshatra in your ninth house. I've got here, you might gain insights and ideas about how to take charge of your life more, um, how to increase your own power and your own authority over your own life. So this could be about taking your power back from somewhere where it's been invested. Okay, so you are taking your power back or you're getting a sense of, do you know, I'm ready to expand. I'm ready to grow. I want more from life. I want, I want, I do want more responsibility. I want, I want to go up now. You know, it's those kind of realizations that could really be happening there on the, on the full moon, on the 18th of September. Cancer, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Leo, Ascendant, Leo moon or Leo sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Mars is going to be in 11th house Gemini for you all September. This transit starts from the 26th of August. It goes through to the 19th of October. So this is excellent energy to power ahead at work. I'm so happy for you, Leo. Yes, this is great. Make progress. You can get things done. You know, uh, your business can grow at this time. You can pick up new clients. If you run social media platforms or any of that, they are set to grow at this time. And you should have energy to do all the stuff that you need to do as well. I often think that, you know, God gives us the inspiration to do things, the ideas. God will also provide the resources. And yes, that's money, but that's also energy. So sometimes when we're low on energy or things aren't happening for us, it may be that we're meant to for that time because there's going to be better times. Uh, divine is very smart. We just remember we're in the hands of the divine, you know. So if things aren't happening, there's probably some divine reason for it. We've got to remember that. Now Venus is debilitated in second house Virgo. So that's through to the middle of the month. And then 17 September, Venus steps into Libra. So in the early part of the month, you're going to benefit from being disciplined with your spending. And in the last half of the month, you have great social energy. You can socialize, you can go out with friends, uh, you know, maybe take a little day trip somewhere or do something fun. So I've got here, yeah, it'll be good to get out and spend time with friends. So that's really the last half of the month. And on the 3rd of September, we've got a new moon in Leo, Purva Falguni Nakshatra. This is happening in your first house. So you can plant seeds for whatever you need more of at this time. And that's interesting. That was tying in with what I was saying. Yeah, I've got his seeds for more guidance. It's interesting or a closer relationship with the divine or more trust in the divine. I've certainly been upping my trust lately um, because yes, uh, what I find is that when we are tested, we turn more towards God at those times. And um, yeah, 3rd of September is a good time for you to consciously wish for 
uh, more of whatever you need and perhaps closer relationship with the divine you know and more trust more faith all of that and the 18th of september we've got a full moon in pisces uttra badrapada nakshatra this is happening in your eighth house so you might gain deep spiritual insights about yourself and others close to you at this time yeah you might get quite a few insights uh, about about yourself about others how to heal any difficult dynamics or rifts you might get uh, some insight into that you might get insight into how to alchemize something that's difficult i've got here you might also learn more about the true spiritual build of the world and how things really work here maybe you'll be introduced to a great book that will will help deepen your understanding leo i want to thank you so much for tuning in we are now going to welcome virgo virgo welcome thank you so much for tuning in so this is virgo ascendant virgo moon or virgo sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology so mars will be in 10th house gemini all september this transit starts from the 26th of august and it goes until the 19th of october so this is excellent energy for work i've got here but just be careful not to go over the head of the the layer above you okay so don't don't go above your bosses or you know any of that that's an old thing my dad always used to hammer home to me he used to tell me that don't don't go above your boss's head or so like if i'm annoyed with my boss i shouldn't go and complain to the boss above him kind of thing yeah i've made that mistake before <laughs> i think there was a reason why he had to tell me that i probably made that mistake um but i mean it's look this is it's good it is excellent energy for work it's it's good for you this is energy this is a long transit too this is till 19th october you can get a lot done work wise you can achieve a lot but it's like it you might not be shining i've got here you you will have better energy to shine even more when mars heads into cancer that's actually even though mars is going to be debilitated but that's actually a better um mars transit for you for success interestingly but you can do a lot with this even with this transit it's still very good mars is exalted in capricorn so this is this is still great energy from 26 august through to 19th october you can do a lot with this but just be careful not to be too uh aggressive i think or ambitious is what i would say you just want to temper the energy a little bit kind of thing now venus is debilitated in first house virgo that's for the first half of the month and then 17 september venus steps into libra i've got here in the early part of the month you might feel tired or drained that is a possibility i've got here it'll be important to rest and look after yourself extra you might want to do light exercise uh just just look after the physical body a bit more i've got here in the later part of the month treat yourself and buy something you've been wanting or spend time with family and enjoy delicious home cooking now buy something you've been wanting if it's easy <laughs> but don't you know go crazy because we are in difficult times until let's say for example well i mean gosh i think this year and next year are going to be uh tough years so yeah i mean i I've, i've certainly had to rein in my spending and all that like not that i i don't even spend much anyway so i've had to rein in what little i spend <laughs> that sounds a bit um but yeah i mean maybe it's something just small and affordable that's that's the idea all right 3rd september there's a new moon in leo purva falguni nakshatra happening in your 12th house so you might gain some really terrific spiritual insights uh, and downloads at this time this is definitely a time for you to keep a dream journal if you do any of that and if you don't keep a dream journal what you can do is do what i do which is sometimes i wake up and it is quite funny actually i've listened to these 
voicemails I've done I just hit the voicemail thing and then I, I tell my dream and I'm like half asleep sometimes I'm yawning in the audio it is ridiculous I mean the, the I've listened back to these and it's like I'm on drugs or something it's crazy um, and I don't take those so yeah it's <laughs> kind of funny but um, you can just do a voice note to yourself in the morning for your dream and then think about it and then Google it later that afternoon. That's what I've done. And it has been helpful actually. It has helped me because I've had some crazy dreams over the last, yeah, last few months. Boy, have I been dreaming. It, it is really helpful to study the symbolism of dreams. Yep, it really is. Uh, 18 September, full moon, Pisces, Uttra Bhadra Pradha Nakshatra. It's happening in your seventh house. So you might gain some deep insights into your love life or your partner um, as well, Virgo. Yeah, well, I wish you I wish you well, Virgo. Take care. We are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Libra Ascendant, Libra Moon, or Libra Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Mars is going to be in ninth house Gemini for you all September. This transit starts from the 26th of August, and it goes until the 19th of October. It could be a little bit stressful. Uh, you might be trying to ascend or go up or you're working hard and you're like, I'm not, you know, I'm not making any progress here. I've got here, yeah, you might come up against obstacles or higher authorities that prevent progress. Don't worry, Libra, your time is going to come. Hang in there. There are better transits. There are better Mars transits. They're coming up. So you are, use the time to prepare you're preparing you're polishing you're becoming excellent keep going keep going uh, you know all that extra time that you spend preparing and polishing and becoming very good you, you're going to be head and shoulders above above everyone else so you keep at it now venus is debilitated in 12th house virgo this is through to the middle of the month and then 17 september venus steps into libra so in the early part of the month, <clears throat> an old love life issue could resurface. Okay, uh, now love life and your health are both going to get a boost from mid-month onwards. Things really should improve. So in that first half of the month, if something needs to come up, you're, you're ready for that now. You know, and it, it could just be some mild thing. Um, but that's just something to bear in mind on the 3rd of September we have a new moon in Leo Purva Falguni Nakshatra this is happening in your 11th house so you can plant seeds to meet new friends to meet those soul tribe people that you really want to meet uh, this could also be a time to grow your social media platforms as well okay so or well to plant seeds that your social media platforms grow or you might get ideas about how to grow your social media platforms. so that's on the 3rd of September that new moon there but it's definitely connecting in with soul tribe people and social media that is your soul tribe people you're gonna find that the people who come and watch your stuff as you're watching mine we're all like-minded people you know and I do you know I see that when I do the readings I ask in my form what is your Maya Briggs type? And the vast majority of all the people who book me, you're all some form of INFJ. I'm INFJ too, guys. We're all, look at that, we all find each other, don't we? That's how it goes. So yeah, um, that's pretty cool. All right, so on the 18th of September, full moon, there's a full moon, Pisces, Uttra Bhadra Pradha Nakshatra. This is happening in your sixth house. So you might gain some deep insights about work or about work colleagues. Uh, it's a good time to reflect on how fulfilling your career is or what you do is or how fulfilling your career has been and what you want to do next. This is about what you want to do. Uh, this is sixth house type stuff. So that's 18th September full moon. Libra, I'm wishing you well. Take care. 
we are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Scorpio Ascendant, Scorpio Moon or Scorpio Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now Mars will be in 8th house Gemini all September. This transit starts from the 26th of August and it goes till the 19th of October. It's a good time to do some clutter clearing if you haven't done that for a while Scorpio this is a good time to do that uh, it's a good time to free up space so that fresh new energy can come in fresh new things can come in fresh new people can come in you know even though you might think well I'm just chucking out some old clothes or something but no it could you don't know what the new thing is like lots of new things could come in I'll give you an example. I knew this family, they cleaned out their garage. It was full of all this stuff. And then they ended up, they weren't planning to buy a new car, but then things happened with the stock market and then they got this money and they were like, oh my God, we can buy a new car. And that's what they did. But they had cleaned out the garage first and they didn't want to buy a new car. They weren't even thinking about it. They weren't shopping for a new car, none of that. They didn't want that. They ended up getting a new car. <laughs> I always think that's an amazing story. Um, let's have a look here. What's happening with Venus? All right, so, oh no, we're not up to that yet. We're still up to with, with Mars. We've just, we've just covered the clutter clearing, haven't we? I got carried away. Now, we're still with Mars in the eighth house. Look, this could be a bit tense, guys. Um, I've got here, there could be some tension in the family or tension with in-laws or shared assets or something to do with shared assets got here so it's a good time to do more things on your own uh, if that feels right to you and if you have to interact with in-laws or this kind of thing just just be careful uh, just know that there's this extra tension at the at the time now Venus is debilitated in 11th house Virgo and that's right through to the middle of the month then 17 September we've got Venus stepping into Libra so in the early part of the month, old friends or old flames could be eclipsed out of your life at this time. Yeah, that is kind of interesting. It's interesting how I've phrased that here. See, in the other signs, I didn't particularly uh, note it in that way. So maybe somebody needs this. I don't know why I've phrased this in this way. But yeah, old friends or old flames could be eclipsed out of your life at this time. Got his second half of the month, you are being provided restful and healing energies. Okay, so if that first half of the month is a little bit intense or difficult, don't you worry. The second half of the month, there's there should be some time to rest. I've got here, enjoy some escapism. Enjoy time doing things that you love. On the 3rd of September, we've got a new moon in Leo, Purva, Falguni, Nakshatra. This is happening in your 10th house. So you can wish for your career to grow in the direction you'd like it to grow in. Uh, if you want to change career or if you want to change something about what you do or, you know, you're not quite happy with where you are, but you'd really like to be doing this other thing. This is the time to wish wish for that to happen and then on the 18th of September we've got a full moon in Pisces Uttra Bhadra Pada Nakshatra this is happening in your fifth house so you might gain deep insights about your romantic partners and or your children at this time Scorpio I want to thank you so much for tuning in how are we doing on time we're okay we are now going to welcome Sagittarius Sagittarius welcome thank you so much for joining this is Sagittarius ascendant Sagittarius moon or Sagittarius sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology before I begin yours Sagittarius I want to apologize I think I made a mistake in last time's report now did I say for you and I'm trying to remember I haven't got it up on my screen but I'm just going to bring up your chart anyway I might have for some reason said Saturn was in the sixth house did I do that last time if it wasn't last time it might have been the time before I tried to find that person's comment I couldn't find it I just want to thank the viewer who flagged that thank you so much for letting me know I always really appreciate um, if there's ever an error sometimes I'm able to do something about it sometimes I'm not I had 
I, I thought about it after soon after I read the comment and I whatever I said last time um, I might have misquoted Saturn's placement but uh, I don't think it impacted the content so it was okay Sometimes I have been known when there's an error, I've been known to take the whole video down and deal with it and then put it up again. I've had some dilemmas like this. Um, so yeah, but I didn't need to for the last time, but there was an error in last time's report. So please know you're always welcome to uh, put down the correction in the, in the comments or say, hey, is there something wrong here? Or please always do that. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, let's see how we go this month. I hope I'm more accurate. So that comment helped because last time, the reason the error happened was because I was working off the preview of my um, transit charts rather than opening them all up. And, you know, I, so I was trying to reduce the time that I spend making these reports. It takes two full days. I, I, there's no way I can't... Uh, I can't reduce the time it takes to make one of these. So yeah, I, this, this time I opened up all the transit charts in full and clicked and then I proofread and double checked. So yeah, it should be all right. <laughs> um, Sagittarius, what's going on? All right, we're going to take a look at this month. So Mars will be in seventh house Gemini all September. The transit starts from the 26th of August and it goes till the 19th of October. Now what I would say here is take care in your relationship with your spouse, your significant other, your business partner, could even be your bosses at work. You know, Mars is going to aspect of the 10th house here. So, you know, you're going to have to take care in these relationships. I've got here, you might be more ambitious this month, but people around you might not share your vision or you might just feel like I'm trying, but I keep coming up against obstacles. Um, I've got here, put any extra energy that you have into projects that require just you this month. So if you can arrange things so that you're just doing more of your own thing across the month of September, that would be amazing, uh, even into October. But I realize that's not always possible. So, but you know, do your best. Now you've got this very often having the awareness takes care of everything really awareness is a powerful healer in itself so you might be able to avoid um for what is it forewarned is forearmed or i don't know i'll, I'll google it i'll put it on the screen <laughs> uh venus what's venus doing well venus is debilitated in 10th house virgo uh, and that's right through to the middle of the month and then 17 september venus is going to step into libra so in the early part of the month an old situation at work might reappear or something is being eclipsed out regarding your work it's a, it's a possibility second half of the month is excellent for socializing it's also great for new opportunities for growing your social media or even for getting work as well if you are looking for work now the 3rd of september we have a new moon in leo purva falguni nakshatra this is happening in your ninth house so this is a time where you might wish for more leadership energy because you know on a new moon we can plant seeds we can wish for something so you might be wishing for more leadership energy uh, or the ability to direct your life on your terms you know and when we do the spiritual work we are deconditioning the old stuff that we don't need we're typically reducing desire you know and then we, we find ourselves a lot more free we find ourselves a lot more empowered, a lot more able to direct our own life on our own terms. God did give us all creator power, you know, so um, so you can use that creator power. But, you know, maybe here on the 3rd of September, the new moon, you could be wishing for um, ninth house that you be cleared. You know, we've got ninth house fire here. Maybe, you know, um, if there are obstacles in the way of you feeling empowered over your own life you know you could be wishing that that karma be burnt up something along those lines uh, is quite possible on the 18th of september we have a full moon in pisces uttrabhadrapada nakshatra this is happening in your fourth house so you might gain deep insights 
uh, about how you were raised. Isn't that interesting? How you were raised. Yeah. So we've got this watery full moon, watery Pisces full moon. So this could be quite profound. This could be quite deep, quite big. You might gain some incredible insights about how you were raised. Get these aha moments, and that could, I mean, that could help clear up your energy so you're directing your life more on your terms. You know, uh, just this big aha that you get on the 18th of September. All these things are motivation to keep doing the spiritual work, you know. Um, yeah. Sagittarius. I also want to just check in with you. Are you have you finished your Sardis out there? You have indeed. All right, no, you have indeed. Good. Well, hopefully you're enjoying your Saturn third from let me just double check that. I don't want to make a mistake. There you are. You are indeed Saturn third from the moon. Yeah, good. Good. Enjoy it, Sagittarius. Enjoy your Saturn transit. You've you're still on a good one. So enjoy that. Uh, all right, we are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon, or Capricorn Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So how are you doing, Capricorn? I do just want to do a quick little check-in. I've got here, you're at the end bit of Sarisati. Let's just look you up as well. I'll have a little check-in with all my Sarisati people. Uh, yeah, you're on the home stretch here. Capricorn you've done the tough stuff I hope you're doing okay if things are still tough I mean we are going through some pretty hectic times out there the cosmic weather is a bit full-on and you're inside Isati so you know if, if you're really feeling it if things are challenging still really I want you to hang in there things are going to get better this was something I was supposed to mention in the um, initial bit but I didn't did I it was um, about this psychic lady that I saw. She was actually saying that December onwards, the whole world is going to get a lot better. So that could be happening sooner. I mean, I am seeing 2026 that things are improving a lot. But who knows? Maybe it's sooner, guys. And for you, you're coming out of your Saudi South in March. 2025 you don't have long to go you've done the school of champions you've been through your sati sati you know you, you don't want to you don't want to give up before that pot of gold you know it's, it's coming it's coming it's the good stuff is coming you just have to hang in there and keep going uh let's see mars what's mars doing mars will be in sixth house gemini for you all september so this transit starts from the 26th of august and it goes until the 19th of October. So this is great energy for you to power ahead with your work. You can compete effectively. Court cases may go in your favor if you're having anything to do with the court system. I've got here, this is great energy to build something or to grow your business. Uh, work hard and prosper type of energy is available to you okay so that's from 26 august to 19th october you are one of the lucky signs capricorn that you're having good strong healthy empowered beautiful mars energy okay at this time you're one of the lucky ones so make the most of that because there's a lot of very difficult mars energy going on at the moment so a lot of frustration a lot of rage a lot of anger if you're having to deal with any of this uh, hang in there keep with your spiritual path I know I, I too have had to deal with some very tough stuff and I've found solace in my spiritual teachers my spiritual books and watching pick a card readings <laughs> that's how I get through I really do I haven't watched much news guys over the last few weeks I was thinking because of the American election I was thinking oh I want to watch some American election type stuff so I can talk about it but I've just had to give it all up because like I've had dilemmas stuff and so I'm like no I can't watch anything negative it's all positive all positive viewing yeah I've had to do a bit of that myself so we do what we have to do don't we uh what's happening with Venus all right Venus is debilitated in ninth house of Virgo that's kind of right through to the middle of the month and then 17 September onwards we've got Venus stepping into Libra so in the early part of the month 
we've got an old situation with a guru or a teacher might come up to be cleared okay so there might be some clearing or something happen in connection with you and a, and a teacher uh, or someone above you something like that but his second half of the month is excellent for work you're shining at work you're being creative you're being fulfilled by what you do there's something about you loving your work second half of the month and that's something you would have learned to do across the Sati Sati you know I've spoken to quite a few of you have talked about the fact that you've discovered a true solace in doing work uh, across this time that's quite special we've got third September new moon this is happening in Leo Purva Falguni Nakshatra it's happening in your eighth house so you can plant seeds for more of your occult gifts to come online okay and according to this psychic that I watched apparently we're all going to have more and more of our psychic gifts come online across the next couple of decades we've got a lot to look forward to in a long-term sense I really do believe that 18 September we've got a full moon Pisces Uttrabhadrapada Nakshatra this is happening in your third house so you might gain insights about your friends or siblings at this time you might be extra insightful Capricorn I want to wish you well take care we are now going to welcome Aquarius Aquarius welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Aquarius ascendant Aquarius moon or Aquarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so now Aquarius you are in the middle of Sati Sati aren't you I just want to check in with you see how you're doing are you okay uh, I know a few people who are in the Sati Sati right now they're in the height of it and it's it is tough okay it's, it's definitely tough uh, some days you might be feeling flat some days you might just you know you just feel disconnected and that's sometimes part of part of this Sati Sati long Sati Sati seven and a half year transit is it's, it's it's a cycle it's a I call it a school of champions you know it's, it's difficult it's hard um, Rumi says how can your mirror be polished if you're irritated by every rub so we kind of have to allow the irritation or the disconnection or the flatness or whatever it is that we're feeling just allow it be with it um, hopefully you know you're in a situation where you can just be a bit um, what I'm finding is that <clears throat> like when when God doesn't give me much work kind of thing I just embrace those days now it used to fill me with tension and stress before but now I'm just like okay I'm meant to not do much so I embrace that it can be hard to do but yeah we've got to we got to do that kind of thing uh, I do know I, I there was one thing I wanted to tell you Aquarius I think it was um the lady who's, who was the creative director of Chanel, did I say this? I might have mentioned this a couple of episodes ago. I think I, I feel like I've mentioned this. I think she's an Aquarius moon. She lost her job. Like 40 years working at Chanel. She is not working there now and she's an Aquarius moon, I think. Um, yeah, so it's people are dealing with all kinds of different things, job losses, um, the loss of family members, um, the loss of reputation. I've seen that with the Sadi Sadi. Uh, I've seen, you know, and that's what I mean about some days you just might feel disconnected. Yeah, I know I, I've, yeah, when I've been disconnected and, you know, it'll, it'll happen with me again. What, but what I am finding though is that the more I am on the spiritual path and the more I do the spiritual work, and just the pure discipline like if I so when things are going difficult what this is one thing I've discovered oh I wanted to say this in the early part of the video I didn't say it one thing I've discovered is that when things get really tough I tighten up my discipline and that helps so I might sleep half an hour early I might wake up half an hour early uh, I might um, I'll, I'll tighten up the discipline somehow I'll clean up the diet a little bit you know I'll um, 
Yeah, I'll do things like that. I'll see what I can rejig with my routine. And I'll try and just, yeah, tight, tightening up. It's like fight Saturn with Saturn. <laughs> right, so Saturn's causing difficulty. Let's use a Saturn remedy. Let's use discipline to, to solve it. It's like when things get tough, I get tougher. You know, it's, it's that. Meet it with toughness. Um, see if that works. Let's chat a bit about your planets this month. So what have we got September? Mars is going to be in fifth house Gemini all September. Um, the transit starts from 26 August. It goes till 19th October. Could be a restless energy, a play here. You might feel a bit restless. I've got here, you might be wanting to get ahead, but you might feel like things are slow or not happening. Uh, expenses could run a bit high this month, so be careful about that. Be careful with investments, money, things like that. It's good energy for creative projects that you do on your own. Uh, and it's good for clutter clearing as well. And if you're spending time with your children, definitely go easy on them or don't expect too much from them. Uh, now Venus is debilitated in 8th house Virgo and that's through to the first half of the month. And then 17 September Venus steps into Libra. So in the early part of the month, an old relationship issue could come up for healing. Uh, the second half of the month is excellent for studying new things, might even be excellent for a little bit of travel as well, if that's something you would like to do or are able to do. Uh, 3rd of September, new moon in Leo, Purva Falguni, 7th house. So you could wish for a healing in your relationship with your partner. Um, you could wish for a partner if you are single. You, know, you could wish to meet that special someone. Uh, and 18 September, we've got a full moon in Pisces, Uttarabhadra, Padra Nakshatra. This is happening in your second house. So you might have new ideas occur to you on how to increase your long-term wealth. You might get some inspiration or ideas about how to uh, improve or create a savings or some, something along those lines. Aquarius, I am wishing you well. Hang in there. Take it easy. Don't push yourself. Okay, if things are slow, and that's another thing I've done. Meet Saturn with Saturn. So if Saturn's really slow, I think to myself, oh, okay, brilliant. I can be slow too. I can have a long shower and I can, you know, take an extra long walk back from the shops and, you know, I, can, I don't, have to, don't have to rush. That's a beautiful thing because I don't like rush energy. <laughs> that is definitely an energy I'm not a fan of. Anyway, Aquarius, take care. Take it easy. We are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. It's Pisces Ascendant. Pisces, I should have said, I just realized I was giving Aquarius a little pep talk there. I should have stayed at Aquarius Moon pep talk. Anyway, Pisces, welcome. Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon or Pisces Sun. Now my Pisces Moon people, my Sadi Sadi people, how are you doing? I just want to check in with you. I just want to make sure you're okay. Uh, it is tough out there. The cosmic weather has been rough, difficult. Uh, you know, parts of my town have been, well, do you know they were saved? Parts of my town were saved, I tell you. Um, there was supposed to be stuff kicking off here. And I saw them board up my local supermarket and things like that. I saw these police with these particular uniforms you know, uh, that uh, we never see here. And I spoke to, so yeah, the building where I am, we're like, we have security on the ground floor. And I spoke to the security guards. I asked them, hey, is everything okay? And they said, well, the police actually did stop some stuff. And I was like, wow. So it's been rough in uh, sort of around where I live. It's been really difficult. And in terms of like the spiritual cosmic weather, yeah, I mean, it's just been tough. What I've observed when I've spoken to spiritual friends of mine is that they're all kind of going, oh, like all my stuff is coming to the surface and they're all dealing with it. And, and one of my spiritual friends, he said, all of my stuff has come to the surface. And he's like, but my materialistic friends, 
they're all doing just great and it's like yeah i've observed the same all the materialistic ones they're having a ball out there and but somehow and us spiritual ones we're like going oh my god i thought i dealt with this and it's come to the surface again and it's like yeah so if you're going through any of that um i just want to say hang in there good transits are coming good times are coming i watched a psychic earlier today she's psychic she's a medium but she does all kinds of things she's quite academic as well and she was saying that december she was saying december onwards things are supposed to get really really good to me uh, when i look astrologically that does seem a little bit optimistic uh i think things could be tough even you know well across next year as well but 2026 we have a number one year and that number one year will be happening at a time when I actually think you might be in the height of your coming to the height of your sati sati anyway but for the world anyway there is going to be fresh new energy come in uh, so I actually kind of think maybe the way you've got your sati sati timed that you're going through it now maybe it is good timing I don't know what I can say though is that I do think that this year is more intense than last year just generally when i compare it to last year i mean we're only mid-august and it's been just pretty full-on uh in lots of parts of the world so yeah i think next year could be tough as well it's a nine year but i sort of think with the one year you've kind of got your side is out there well timed because i do think things are supposed to really get better in 2026 um any guidance for how to get through this early part of sadi sadi let's think it's a 12th from transit so you might be experiencing it could be hard on your health it could be hard to make money it could be um, you might be quite isolated Pisces but this is the time to get close to God this is the time and I, I've been reading a brilliant book it's um, Yogananda's Man's Eternal Quest my goodness it's beautiful and there are just these tiny little chapter even just reading the little chapter headings are giving me so much peace and comfort one of them was something about put god first in your life it was so beautiful let me just get it out i didn't know i was going to do this but let's well anyway i'll just crank this up and i'll talk through your notes and then we'll just see if there's any inspirational little bits that come from there um, man's eternal quest i recommend it what he's getting me to do through this book is put God first, which I do anyway. Uh, and I have done. I've kind of gone through a bit of a tough time myself. And yeah, I discovered I need to put God first. And it, if, if I'm good with God, everything's okay. And you're in a, when you're in that starting bit of Sati Sati, that's the time you can get very close to God in this time that you're in so it, it really is an incredible time that you're in uh let's have a look at it so mars what's mars doing this month okay let's just look at september and then i'll dip into this book uh, mars will be fourth house gemini all september this transit starts from 26 august it goes till 19th october i've got here at times you might feel cabin fever you might feel like you need to get out and about short trips to change the energy could be helpful if you need time on your own this is a good time for that yes you are in a time where it's isolating and all of that anyway got here take care in relationships with mother and or your partner this can be energy for renovating your place where you live that is possible i've got here but take care it could be extra expensive as well now venus is debilitated in seventh house virgo through to the middle of the month and then 17 September onwards, Venus steps into 8th house Libra. So in the early part of the month, relationship energy isn't great. But an old relationship issue could come up for healing. That is possible. Uh, and the second half of the month is much better for your love life. Okay, so hang in there with your love life. Definitely. Now, 3rd September, there's a new moon. Leo Purva Falguni Nakshatra. This is happening in your 6th house. So you can wish for next steps in career to be shown to you. You know, if you, um, and recognize that that could take time. You're now in a Saturnian phase where time is slower a little bit. Like it's not, 
things aren't happening quickly for you maybe so um, it's time to be gradual but if you want next steps in career to be shown to you ask for that I have seen look I've seen some people do amazing things inside of Southie and actually achieve a lot and pack a lot in I've seen that too I'm just sort of remembering that now yeah it's, it's a bit different depending on setup of your chart and things like that uh, 18 September, we've got a full moon in Pisces, Uttarabhadra Pradha Nakshatra. This is happening in your first house. So you might discover new ideas that are going to help you improve your whole life. And this really is Pisces, 12th from transit. I tell you, I loved my uh, 12th from transit that I had, you know, recently. Wow, it changed my life. It changed who I am. It was brilliant. It reduced desires by so much. And yeah, my life has more um, God <laughs> in there, you know, or spirituality or however you want to call it. The all is one. Just even these little titles, let me just kind of go back where he says, thank God. Yeah, this was it. Give God first place in your heart. Just that line just that you know of course wherever your mind is that is where you will spend your time what if God had not given you the power to play or read or work you could do nothing so he should come first in your life see he gave us the good stuff he gave us the ability to play the ability to work the ability to read he gave us everything God knows what is in your heart. Give him first place there. I always say that as well as well, when people have like difficulties in relationships, you know, with their boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife or mother, father or whoever. It's like, okay, you're having a relationship with them, but if you have a great relationship with God as your first primary relationship, all other relationships will be fine. There is such truth in that. There really is. I'm, yeah, sort of deepening my understanding of this all the time and um, it's, it's very helpful. Guys, I'm going to have to wrap up. This is going to be a very long video to edit. My MacBook is struggling. It is like, I need to upgrade this thing. Man, I've, I've, I, called it, I went to the Apple Center. I was like, can I put more RAM in here? They said no. So I'm like, ugh. Oh to get like a whole new machine anyway anyway guys i want to thank you so much for being here thank you so much to everyone who watches these videos who puts a like who shares everything thank you with all my heart and i look forward to seeing you next time mm -hmm.